Hello everyone. This video is going to show you how to navigate and make use of Cove Studio Purdue. Cove is a tool set that allows professors to access texts, upload their own texts, integrate them into their learning management system, Brightspace at Purdue, link directly to the documents, annotate together with your class, easily add in images, uh, both teachers and students, and even incorporate film. George Washington's yielding his power and stepping away. Is that true? There are going to be two parts to this video. The first part is going to be oriented to students and will illustrate how to get into Cove, how to navigate to your anthology, and how to annotate. The second part of the video, it will be more oriented to teachers, how to build an anthology, how to integrate links into Brightspace, and how to upload texts. Students, the main thing you need to know about accessing Cove Purdue is that you simply have to enter through purdue.edu and use your boiler key credentials in order to gain access. Once you log in, you'll see a screen like this one. The first time you log in, your list of anthologies uh, will likely be blank. Uh, that's because you need to log in before your teacher can assign the anthology to you. Once that happens, uh, the anthology will appear here, and you need only click on it uh, to link to your class's anthology. There you'll see a list of titles, you can organize them by clicking on author to alphabetize or on title to alphabetize by title. And to read the texts and to annotate, you need only click on the title, which brings you to the text uh, that you're being assigned in your class. To annotate, you need only highlight any text and click on this uh, icon that appears. It's uh, very, you can type anything you wish. Uh, it's very easy to add in images. So let's say I want an image of Lewis Carroll. I merely have to find a JPEG of that image somewhere on the web. I encourage my own students to use Wikipedia. Uh, but note that at Wikipedia, if you just click on the image, this first link is actually a wrapper. You need to click on the image here to get to the actual JPEG file. You just copy that, go back to your annotation, and paste, and save. It's that easy to add in images and films. Uh, it's very easy to see the other users uh, in your class so that you can see what individuals uh, had to say about the text. And you can easily go between your own annotations and those of your group. You can go back and edit your annotation by uh, clicking this pencil icon. Uh, and once you're ready to share your annotation with the others in the class, uh, you need to click on this uh, here. My groups can view this annotation. So do that when you're ready for the rest of the group to see it. Otherwise, uh, the others here in this group will not be able to see your annotation. If you're looking at a long document like this one, it's a good idea to click on whole document because that will show you all of the annotations from anywhere within the document. And you need only click on one to be taken to precisely that spot in the text. That's about all you need to know about accessing uh, Cove Studio and starting to annotate. The next part of this video is oriented more to teachers and will address how to create an anthology, how to integrate into Brightspace, and how to upload texts. Cove has been created to make it very easy to draw on our uh, vetted content, which is uh, properly formatted and ADA compliant, or to upload your own text and make uh, all of these texts available to an anthology and to your students for group annotation. To create an anthology, 
you need only click this button here. You're given a form like this one. Uh, you can call it uh, whatever you will and give as long of a description as you would like. Uh, you can personalize it by adding an image. Uh, I'll add one of Purdue here. And you click on Create Anthology. There it is here, Sample Purdue Anthology. So we'll go to it. That's the image I picked. Uh, from here, you can then search for texts. Uh, we have uh, over 3 million words of texts. We are particularly strong in the 19th century at the moment, but we're in the process of uh, encoding and preparing text from uh, all fields, all literature. Uh, once at the screen, you can search for a given text, for example, the Lewis Carroll we just saw, and you can add it to your anthology. As I say, we've uh, begun to uh, encode text from other periods. So for example, uh, let's say I want to do To the Lighthouse, or perhaps a restoration work like Afro Ben. Could add in Orinoco. And let's do Love Armed. Again, you can add in as many texts as you wish. Once you're ready, you click on All. Your students see these same texts and can navigate to them and start annotating. Now, to assign your anthology to your students, you need to click on Users here and do a search for your individual students. Now, if I do a search for purdue.edu, we'll have a very long list. Uh, so you we will have to look for each individual student and then assign uh, the anthology to that student. Once you've done that, click on All here, and you'll see your students listed. It's a good idea to uh, also assign yourself to your anthology. That way it will appear under your assigned anthologies as well and it facilitates the group annotation. So again I click on all and there are two people uh, assigned to this anthology. If I follow uh, the path to one of these documents uh, you can see that those two individuals have been added here. Now the reason for this is that this is a way to protect the privacy of students. So only people that you have assigned to this anthology can see each other's annotations. You can easily toggle between your own annotations and those uh, in your group. And uh, students uh, can choose to annotate just for themselves uh, if when they're ready to share with the rest of the class, they need to click on this button here. My groups can view this annotation. Uh, it's very easy for them to forget this step, uh, but this is basically their agreement that what they have written is ready to be shared with everyone. Now, the reason for the anthology tool is both to facilitate the addition of texts uh, to your anthology, uh, but also uh, to create a unique URL or web, web page address, uh, as you can see, sample Purdue Anthology, that's the name we gave it, so that you can very easily integrate the uh, page into your uh, Brightspace. Uh, as you saw earlier, all you need to do is provide a link, and as long as students are logged into uh, both uh, Brightspace and CoStudio, the uh, link is uh, seamless. Those texts that we have encoded are ADA compliant, so they're uh, readable by machines. Uh, they are also properly formatted uh, with line numbers. You can also upload your own texts uh, at any time. You need only go to your dashboard, click on Create New Document, we recommend that you use this paste directly into the form since so many Word and PDF documents have uh, problems with them. Here, all you need to do is uh, cut and paste. So let's say you do not see the Afro Ben poem that you would like students to read. You can go find that poem, say Angelica's Lament, cut and paste into your form here. You have the ability to manipulate the text. Let's make give that a header. Give this a subheader. 
It's out of space here. An important thing to keep in mind is that uh, once you make the text annotatable, uh, it no longer can be changed, the source text. So you want to make sure that you're happy with the text. Uh, you want to give some uh, information here. Uh, Angelica's Lament. Save. And there it is, under Mine, Your Documents. So I'm going to just make sure that I'm happy with the text. Looks fine. Uh, so I'm going to set it to annotatable and update again. And once I've done that, all I need to do is go back to my dashboard, uh, go to my anthology, and if I do another search for Afroben, our text appears here. It is marked as not vetted because it uh, does not follow our coding standards, um, but uh, it is available for you to assign to your anthology. And students can uh, click on it. These are the two students that I have assigned, well, myself included, and students can then immediately begin to annotate. In my experience, this a platform is particularly good for uh, minority students, uh, first generation students, some female students who might feel shy uh, speaking in the face-to-face -face classroom, they often bloom in this alternative uh, format. It's also quite valuable for students to see each other's annotations. They claim control of the document, they raise the ante because the students that are less strong can see what a work annotation looks like. And you can be sure that students are actually reading the text since uh, you can actively see what it is they have to say about it. If you ever have a question, do not hesitate to email coveditions at gmail.com. That email is monitored by all six administrative directors of Cove, as well as myself, and we will uh, get back to you as quickly as possible.